بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف المرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين أما بعد This is night 11, episode 11 uh, Summary of Juz uh, 12 we are, we are inshallah uh, beginning Surah Hud uh, Supposed to be from verse 5 in Surah Hud But I preferred to start Surah Hud from its beginning So we have Surah Hud and Surah Yusuf Inshallah half of Surah Yusuf Bi'idhnillah ta'ala uh, with regard to Surah Hud, alayhi salam, it's named after the Prophet Hud, alayhi salam, and it is one of the, the second surah after Yunus, the Prophet Juna, the Pro Yunus, the one before that, uh, that begins with Alif Lam Ra. So I, there are five surahs that begin with Alif Lam Ra, and one surah that begins with Alif, uh, Alif Lam Mim Ra. Subhanallah, interestingly, uh, you know, the, uh, all of these five, six surahs uh, after Alif Lam Ra or Alif Lam Mim Ra, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala speaks about the Quran, the wisdom of the Quran, the eloquence of the Quran, the uh, elucidation or clarification of the, the Quran. Like uh, uh, in Surah Yunus, Allah says, Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitab al Kitab al Hakim. These are the book of wisdom. And in Surah Hud, we have got here, Kitab al Uhkimat Ayatuhu, a book whose ayat are confirmed, are clarified, uh, made uh, clear. Thumma fussilat, and then detailed with stories, with warnings, with uh, reminders, with proverbs. Milladun hakim in khabir. The all revealed from a all wise, all and all knowing, subhanahu wa ta'ala, all aware, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Uh, if, you, if you look at Surah Ibrahim, kitabun unzila ilayka li tukhrija nasa min al-dhurumati ila nur uh, If you look at Surah Al-Hijr, tilka ayatul kitabi mubin, tilka ayatul kitabi quran mubin. So uh, there is, there is a reminder, you know, meant from the beginning of these surahs, as we have here in Surah Hud. Uh, SubhanAllah, as, uh, as usually, I try to highlight some of the themes or the objectives of each surah, and then I give you a glimpse or summary of the main contents uh, that we can pick up, uh, pick up inshallah, uh, and follow when we recite or listen to these surahs, inshallah ta'ala. With regard to Surah Hud, uh, SubhanAllah, Ajib, uh, Surah Hud's, uh, uh, one of the th uh, central themes or objectives of Surah Hud is to uh, support the Prophet Muhammad by, uh, and the believers by telling or retelling you know, stories about those of the past. And you will see this in Surah Hud. Allah tells us about uh, uh, there is a series of stories uh, beginning from the uh, story of the first messenger on earth, Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Uh, as uh, also, if you look at the, the Surah Hud, Subhanallah, uh, the Surah, you know, uh, ha begins with, uh, you know, the first of the stories that are mentioned in Surah Hud is the story of Sayyidina Nuh, alayhi salam, and then a list of stories. Then at the conclusion of Surah Hud, something which is really important, there is a command to the Prophet Muhammad, alayhi salatu wasalam, that says, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتْ وَمَنْ تَابَ مَعَكَ وَلَا تَطْغَوْ So I stand firm. Have istiqama, consistency on faith, firmness upon your faith. And those with you, wala tatraw, and do not uh, go astray, and do not transgress, innahu bima ta'maluna basir. So this command of istiqama actually in a hadith that mentions that the Prophet ﷺ's hair was made gray or white as a sign of old age because of one of these surahs. Because of the command of istiqama. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us istiqama. We'll come to this. And then uh, the point I want to make is the conclusion of Surah Hud. Subhanallah, Allah says, min rusul. It's very, very important uh, if, if anyone would like to or wants to benefit from the stories in the Quran. If anyone wants to benefit from the guidance of the Quran, Allah gives the ingredients uh, you know, of this, uh, you know, to achieve this benefit. Like, Hudan lil The Quran is a guidance to those who have taqwa. Uh, likewise, the, you will benefit from the stories in the Quran. Allah says, وَكُلَّنَّ قُصُّ عَلَيْكَ مِنْ أَنْبَاءِ الرُّسُلِ And all these, uh, uh, all of the, all these narrations or uh, narratives or stories or news that we relate to you from the stories of the messengers, مَا نُثَبِّتُ بِهِ فؤادك. In them, or in these stories, uh, what something or that which we make your heart firm and we strengthen your heart with through the stories uh, and in these stories there has come to you the truth Allah never tells us about anything except 
truth وموعظة and admonishment or exhortation وموعظة وذكرى and a message of remembrance or reminder للمؤمنين for those who have iman likewise at the conclusion of Surah Yusuf uh, we will come to Surah Yusuf we will have uh, uh, the last ayah in Surah Yusuf subhanallah intriguing like profound Allah says لقد كان في قصصهم عبرة indeed in their stories of those ones the prophets and messengers you know the previous nations um, there was or there is a عبرة a beneficial lesson for whom ya Allah لأولي الألباب for those who think and those who give thought and those who hate coming back to Surah Hud begins with uh, speaking about the Quran كتاب أحكمت آياته ثم فصلت من لدن حكيم خبير it is from the all wise the all aware سبحانه وتعالى الله الذي خلق السماوات والأرض Allah speaks about that he is the creator of the heavens and the earth then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us that وَمَا مِن دَابَّةٍ فِي الْأَرْضِ إِلَّا عَلَى اللَّهِ رِزْقُهَا there is no any dab animal or anything that walks or moves on the on earth except it is upon Allah you know to give it sustenance subhanallah whether they are animals they are humans uh, they have you know uh, it is upon Allah and this is something out of Allah's bounty that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, provi provides as he is the provider you know to, to all of these dawab the, the animals and the human beings despite of their ungratefulness or their gratefulness despite of their belief or unbelief whether believers or unbelievers Allah still continues to provide for them and this is out of his mercy and out of his rahmah and this also uh, you know uh, reassures those who are worried about the risk your limit or your level is just effort and sa'i to seek for risk but don't worry your risk is predestined and don't don't fight or kill others for it or you know argue for it you know you have to be reassured that your risk will come to you as Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala predestined then Allah speaks about again about the challenge of the Quran meaning you know people uh, claimed that the Quran was forged was concocted by the Prophet Muhammad alayhi salatu wasalam Allah said they say that he uh, he invented it, he he forged it. And then Allah says, Kulfatu bi'ashri suri muthlihi muftarayat. Then produce and show me ten verses, you know, like this Quran. Then uh, show me one verse, you know, uh, show me uh, even, you know, um, one ayah. So all of these, you know, uh, different levels of challenge, you know, to those masters of the language of the Quran, and they all failed. Uh, these these um, you know challenges are mentioned in many surahs as we have here in surah in surah hud so there is a um, there is an emphasis in the beginning of surah hud as something similar you know in the five surahs or six surahs that begin with huruf muqatta alif lam ra alif lam mim ra now we have the first story or the first news about the prophet the first messenger on earth after Sayyidina Adam alayhi salam. So humanity all together were one nation, meaning they all were worshipping one almighty Allah for about uh, ten, one, millennium, one millennium or one thousand years. Ashrat Qurun, there is a difference uh, of, uh, of interpretation of the word Qarn, is it century or is it a generation? Uh, you know, uh, it doesn't matter. So uh, the humanity for uh, 10 Qurun, 10 generations or 10 centuries, they were worshipping one Allah until subhanAllah shaitan made uh, uh, beautified to the people or seduced people to worship idols. SubhanAllah. And that was these idols or statues were just initially came up as with good intention to remind people about the worship of Allah and then with the passage of time and ignorance people worship these idols these idols the first idols to be uh, erected or established on earth the, the intention behind was to encourage people to remember those figures uh, on uh, you know because the statues were actually uh, constructed in the forms to look like the uh, pious ones so uh, now we have got the story of Sayyidina Nuh subhanallah an amazing story and there is so much detail about the story of Sayyidina Nuh in Surah Hud as one of the surahs that mentions uh, Surah Hud uh, uh, the story of Sayyidina Nuh alayhi salam so uh, something that is you will find in common each and every prophet or messenger was sent he would preach Abudullah, oh my people, worship Allah, 
Malakum min ilahin ghayru. This is something you will find, you know, the beginning or the first, um, you know, um, article or the first duty that each and every prophet and messenger would uh, spell out and would convey to his people was Tawheed. وَلَقَدْ أَرْسَلْنَا نُوحًا إِلَىٰ قَوْمِهِ أَنْ أُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ أَنْ أُعْبُدُ اللَّهَ مَا لَكُمْ مِنْ إِلَيْهِنْ غَيْرُهُ أَفَلَا تَذَكَّرُونَ Then the start, the people of Sayyidina Nuh, they started to argue. They argued a lot. Subhanallah, Allah tells us about, you know, قَالُوا يَا نُوح They said, oh Nuh, you know, uh, uh, kick out those weak ones, those, you know, of low, uh, you know, the low people amongst you and then we will believe. And subhanAllah, lengthy discussion and argument between Nuh and his people. And he was so merciful. He, ha he was so kind with them. Then he said, Ya Nuh, O Nuh, Qad jadaltana. You have argued with us or debated with us. Fa jidalana. You, you argued a lot, much as well. Fa'atina bima ta'iduna in kunta min as -sadiqin. Subhanallah. They said, "You bring upon us what you, uh, what you are warning us from." Meaning, they are asking the adab. What happened? The adab, the punishment. What was the punishment of, say, of the people of Sayyidina Nuh? The flood, the great flood that humanity knows. Flood where people drowned. Subhanallah. No one was left. No disbeliever was left. You know, uh, 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 you know, safe. Uh, only those who were saved, the people who believed with Sayyidina Nuh and some of his family because his son, one of his, um, he had four sons uh, and his son Kanaan, it is said, he didn't believe. And subhanAllah, Allah tells us Sayyidina Nuh was, he was uh, constructing the ark or the ship and people would make, would make fun of him. Oh, he's making ship or ark uh, where no water is there. If you make fun of us today, it's gonna be, you're going to be a lesson for others tomorrow. And then subhanAllah tells us about the how, the, when uh, Bismillah Majriha Mursaha, after he constructed the ship under the eyes or the, the, the guidance of Allah and his inspiration, Allah say, says, Bismillah Majriha Mursaha, say Bismillah, uh, whether it moves, whether it, uh, it is at rest or stops. In Rabbi Lagafur Rahim, and then Wahia Tajere be him fi mojing kaljibal. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. The, the, the scene depicted, you know, and uh, presented to us about how the waves, you know, of that flood that um, through, uh, on which, or through which the ship was sailing, you know, uh, it, the, the waves were as high as mountains, were towering to the sky, subhanAllah. And the uh, Sayyidina Nuh, he called out, Oh my son, embark with us, come with us. And subhanAllah, you know, he chose to be with the disbelievers and he said, I'm going to save myself. I'm going to go to a, um, a, high, a high hill or, you know, the top of the mountain. No one can be saved from the command of Allah except whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, has mercy upon. Then the story goes on. Allah tells us how to say the son of Sayyidina Nuh didn't believe and say Sayyidina Nuh. Uh, was asking Allah, Ya Allah, you know, my son, please, my son. And then Allah subhanAllah, Allah told him, he's not of your family. You know, and then Sayyidina Nuh, he, uh, he uh, put, you know, the mahabba of Allah, you know, before the mahabba of his son. This is something in our life. You know, you may love someone who's close to you, but if it's, this is going to be against the love of Allah, a love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala must come first. Then something um, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, which I want to highlight before I move to, Conclude in Surah Hud and go to Surah Yusuf salam. Allah says, Tilka min anba il ghayb. These are from the stories of the unseen. The Prophet Muhammad والسلام, he was not there. He was not there at the time of Sayyidina Nuh. He was not there at the time of Sayyidina Musa. He was not at the time of Sayyidina Isa salam. He came after. But how can the Quran tell us and how the Quran, if it is from the Prophet, how the Quran, it is from the Prophet وسلم, as the disbelievers claimed, how would he tell us about these things? Subhanallah, with zero mistake, with zero, no doubt, all truth, subhanallah, with certainty. These are from the unseen that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala informed the Prophet Muhammad about 
and وهدى وموعظة للمتقين. Allah tells us والعاقبة للمتقين. The uh, the uh, outcome and the end will be for those who are those who are pious. This is what I I spend a few minutes on the story of Sayyidina Ruh because it's really you know amazing surah and a surah that is meant to teach us so many lessons of belief, lessons of support that Allah gave to His Prophet Nuh alayhi salam. Lessons uh, that those who are, have pride and arrogance they can never escape from Allah subhanahu wa taala and they can never challenge Allah subhanahu wa taala and so many other lessons we have got the second story is the story of Sayyidina Hud right with his people and subhanAllah Sayyidina Hud did challenge his people you know people claim that he had that he is, he, he is possessed and the, his miracle each and every prophet had miracles to and was supported with he was supported through miracles Sayyidina Hud he challenged his people and he said you guys all together come to harm me you can never harm me and Ayuta with anything so and subhanAllah he was saved Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam, and the surah, this be, uh, it, it must be a uh, something, a powerful miracle. That's why the surah is named after Sayyidina Hud alayhi salam. We have got the story of Sayyidina Salih, wa ila thamud akhahum salihan, qala ya qawmi abudu Allah, ma lakum min ilan ghayru. And Allah tells us about the, the, the sheikh Kamal, his miracle, and how his people dislaughtered it. And then the story about Sayyidina uh, Ibrahim, some news about Sayyidina Ibrahim, and there is an emphasis how Sayyidina Ibrahim welcomed and honored his guest. The angels came to him, giving him glad tidings about um, about Ishaq. He's going to witness Ishaq, and he's going to witness his grand, uh, the grand uh, child of Ishaq, which is Ya'qub. Uh, so they, they served with generosity, the angels, and then subhanAllah, Sayyidina Ibrahim was arguing with say, the angels when they came down with the punishment of the people of Sadum, Sodomi, the, the homosexuals. You know, the, the, the Quran mentions that something in history, there is the, 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 um, there is the city of Sodom and Gomorrah. And that is mentioned in history that the Quran relates us, you know, the, the major sin uh, of homosexuality or, you know, having fahisha, men with men. And then Sayyidina Ibrahim was arguing out of his mercy and compassion that, Ya Allah, you know, uh, don't punish those people. Inna fiha luta, qala nahnu min fiha. Then the story about Sayyidina Shuhaib and how uh, after the people of Shuhaib disbelieved, uh, they would cheat in their business transactions in their uh, commercial uh, uh, you know transactions so uh, something that islam shows us islam is not to be separated from your life it's a way of, of your life so um, it's a way of life so sayyidina shuaib he says um, he, he warned his people you guys you're cheating people in your business so how come a muslim be a muslim and he is not having he doesn't have a manner he is not having a proper ways of you know business transactions this this is an emphasis here you, you know something highlighted from the story of sayyidina shuaib with his people then allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us a little bit about oh there is a reference to the story of sayyidina musa with Fir'aun, and there is there is a depiction or some uh, 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 mentioning about some of the scenes of the day of qiyamah Subhanallah. In وكذلك أخذ ربك إذا أخذ القرى وهي ظالمة. Allah tells us that He overtakes the the, the uh, oppressors and the wrongdoers and the, the cities when they are wrongdoing sins and transgressing. Allah delays them. Allah gives them respite. Allah gives them so much time to repent, to wake up. But waliyadu billah, Allah overtakes them suddenly. Subhanahu wa ta'ala, inna akhdahu alimun shadeed. Then Allah tells us about um, that those who are in Jannah, uh, su'idu, those who will be happy, those who will achieve happiness, they are the people of Jannah. Then it comes to us, the command, فَاسْتَقِمْ كَمَا أُمِرْتَ The command of istiqamah that I mentioned in the beginning. Then comes uh, to us, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, concludes the surah with the reminder that these stories are for those who have iman. Then, um, forgive me for uh, you know, speaking much about Surah Hud because it is meant to uh, take the remembrance, to take the lessons from the stories of the, prophet, uh, the prophets and messengers. And we have got the Surah of Sayyidina Yusuf that comes in Surah, specific Surah, Surah Yusuf, uh, Surah number 12 in the Quran. Allah says it is the, one of the most beautiful uh, stories. Ahsan al Qasas, most beautiful stories is Surah Yusuf alayhi salam. Right, the way Allah tells us the story, the way the lessons are, the, you know, uh, to be derived and learned. Surah Yusuf, it is said, no one is sad, is sad, who has sadness, and he would recite Surah Yusuf and reflect on the meanings of Surah Yusuf, right? Because it is meant to understand the Quran. The Quran, to be honest, needs tafsir, it needs to some keys, you know, to understand it. 
no uh, difference Arabic or non-Arabic. All need to make an effort to understand the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is eloquent. It is, you know, uh, 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 the, the Quran is bayan. Subhanallah, so it needs, uh, uh, you know, some uh, to, to understand its meaning and to reflect on this meaning. So I'm going to give you a little bit of brief about Surah Yusuf. And because we have the Surah, inshallah, next, Juz ibn Ta'ala. Surah Yusuf begins with, uh, um, you know, the Ru'ya of, uh, first after Alif Lam Ra, Tilka Ayatul Kitab al Mubin, again speaks about the Quran uh, of clarity, you know, whose verses are clear. And then, Nahnu Nakusu Alika Ahsan al Qasas. Nahnu, Allah says, Muhammad will relate to you the most beautiful stories. Bima Ahayna Ilika Hadha al Quran, and you have been unaware before, right? Again, there is, a, you know, that the Prophet وسلم, did not, you know, uh, bring these things fr uh, from his own accord. He, it was revealed to him. Then Allah says, tells us about the vision, the ru'ya that Sayyidina Yusuf had. And he, he told it to his father. Subhanallah, as the ru'ya that Sayyidina Yusuf had, he, he saw 11 stars and he saw the sun and the moon were making sujood to him. And then his father realized that it's going to be something special for him. And he was man of knowledge, Sayyidina Ya'qub, alayhi salam. Um, you know, subhanallah, because of that ru'ya and something else, because of his beauty. Sayyidina Yusuf alayhi salam, he was granted half of the beauty of, of humanity. And that beauty was not only in the way he looks or how he would look, subhanallah, but also in his akhlaq. Something manifested is manifested in Surah Yusuf, how he would behave with the people, with the inmates in prison, with his brothers when he forgave them. Subhanallah, the way he would ask Allah and pray to Allah, the way he was loyal to his um, to his master who, who sold him, or sorry, uh, his master who took him as a slave, right? And he purchased him. Subhanallah, ajib. So Sayyidina Yusuf was beautiful and that beauty was test for him as well. You know, because of that test, you know, Subhanallah, he struggled and he strived. Why the story of Sayyidina Yusuf, um, that it, it only speaks about Sayyidina Yusuf from the beginning to the end, you know, one story. Uh, with his father Yaqub and his step and his step brothers, you know, uh, those brothers who troubled him, they were not, you know, they meaning uh, full brothers, they were step brothers. Subhanallah, what happened? Because of envy, you know, and because of the traps of the shaitan, wasawis shaitan, they, subhanallah, they troubled his brother, they were uh, their brothers, and subhanallah, they were going to assassinate him. They actually uh, tried to assassinate him, but Allah didn't will to be killed. And subhanallah tells Allah tells us about this story, you know, uh, from a challenge after a challenge, you know, to another challenge, you know, he was thrown into the well and he was uh, going to be killed and he was, you know, removed from his clothes and he was removed into the darkness. He was thrown into the darkness of the well, you know, being wronged by the darkness of oppression and thulm. And then he was sold as a slave. Al Karim ibn al Karim ibn al Karim, the most generous and most honorable son of most honorable son of most honorable. You know, Al Karim ibn al Karim ibn al Karim, Yusuf ibn Aqub ibn Ibrahim, he was sold as a slave. And then, subhanAllah, he was seduced by the wife, the fitna of Shahwa. And then, subhanAllah, he was thrown into, he was, he was put into prison and he was tested in a different form of testing, which was he was in position of the treasures of Egypt. Subhanallah, it, it gives us a glimpse that this life is full of tests and uh, afflictions and tribulations and it different ways of test. You know, it could be a test of oppression, it could be a test of envy, it could be a test of shahwa, it could be a test or, you know, um, a test where you are in position, you have position or your fame and prestige. It's a different way of test. We have to be aware of all of these tests and take the lessons from the story of Sayyidina Yusuf. Subhanallah, they, um, the, uh, the time is running out. I want to just give you a, give you, give you some keys, give you some, um, all of us to uh, try to reflect on this ayat. So Sayyidina Yusuf, he was sold to a nice man from Egypt, by the way, when Egypt um, had the treasures of the earth, as we will see. Um, he was uh, sold to the one of the ministers uh, in the court of the king of Egypt, and uh, Subhanallah, the wife uh, of that. He, yes, he was sold as a slave, but he was honored by that man, and that's why Sayyidina Yusuf was loyal to him when his wife uh, uh, Zalikha or Zulaikha, you know, tried to seduce him because he was so beautiful. And it is said that Subhanallah, this wife was even virgin after the uh, her husband died. And Subhanallah. Um, Allah tells us about, I want to highlight, you know, a couple of things before I conclude. How Sayyidina Yusuf uh, was saved from such fitna, 
from a beautiful woman, right, where he, there was no any finger to be pointed against him because he was a slave and the doors were closed. No one was there. And subhanAllah, he was saved. Number one, Allah tells us and highlights how Sidney Yusuf was saved. It's a lesson for all youth and for everyone who is tested and trialed by shahwa and desires. Allah says, she closed the doors and she said let's come and she prepared herself for the fahish and, 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 and zina and she said and, and subhanallah what did Sayyidina Yusuf say he said I seek refuge and protection in Allah. He resorted to Allah. He had ikhlas. And that's why Allah says, إِنَّهُمْ إِبَادِنَا الْمُخْلَصِينَ So through ikhlas and seeking protection. Why do we seek protection? أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقُ وَأَعُوذُ رَبِّ Because we, you and I, and are weak. And we seek protection for something that harms us. So we need to seek protection and resort to Allah. He is the, the only, with Him is the only, you know, uh, uh, way out to and save us from any fitten of life. So through ikhlas and through, um, uh, you know, seeking protection in Allah and being loyal to others, he was loyal and had wafa. He had wafa. He remembered the favor that that man gave to him when he purchased him and he gave him, you know, uh, he he well welcomed him in his palace. Uh, then Subhanallah, um, Allah tells us. Uh, that the women would uh, backbite the wife of Al-Aziz and subhanAllah they started to also speak about Sayyidina Yusuf and the, the, the wife of that minister she invited the women and to show them how she was troubled by the beauty of Yusuf السلام, and she uh, offered them some fruit and they cut off their hands when they, sh when, when they saw Yusuf السلام, and they said this is not a human being in هذا إلا ملك كريم and then subhanallah the, the woman the wife again said إن لم يفعل ما أمره if he is not gonna do what I command him regarding the فاحشة لا يسجنن he's gonna be put in prison ولا يكونن من الصاغرين and then سيدنا يوسف again قال رب السجن أحب إلي يا الله it is more, it is to my liking. I like to be put in prison than be seduced by or having going through this fitna. And then what happened? His Lord responded to him. Subhanallah, with the fa in Arabic, not wa, fa fu, meaning quick, immediately Allah responded to him. Allah removed the kaid, the plot, and the, the fahisha, the sedition of these women. You know, away from him, but he was he was put in prison for a for a few years for wisdom and reason. Something that is being highlighted. What is this? Is that Subhanallah? Even in prison, Sayyidina Yusuf السلام, he did not leave the da'wah to Allah. His inmates, his prison inmates, were, were came to him, had two visions and two ru'ya, asking him to interpret. He showed them that he can interpret, and he did. Subhanallah, properly. And exactly what he interpreted for them came true. Subhanallah, he said uh, he first, he first before he give people the the the, the you know the khidma of the interpretation of the dreams. He said inni taraktu millat qawm la yu'minuna billah. He reminded them about Allah al Wahid. Ma ta'buduna min dunihi illa asma. Don't worship the idols. These are only names that you you, you made up. You know, illa al Wahid al Qaha. In al Hukmu illa lillah. Judgment is only for Allah. Then um, that was a lesson. This is really, really, you know, important lesson. Uh, the lesson of da'wah. You know, if serving the deen, we have a responsibility. You know, all of us, we get busy with dunya, but don't forget your deen. You have to work out. Everyone, every Muslim is responsible. Everyone is based on his, where, the, where he is. Allah puts us in positions. You know, a, an engineer, a doctor, you know, someone is IT, someone is imam, teacher. We all have to fulfill the duty of da'wah. Then I want to conclude with, you know, that something. That subhanAllah, Allah taught Yusuf السلام, how to interpret the dreams. The king of Egypt who was above the minister, he had two dreams and subhanAllah in uh, the dreams he saw two fat cows you know, and two uh, weak cows and then he saw, uh, saw also in the dream seven, sorry, seven cows, seven fat and seven, dry, uh, seven uh, weak ones, seven ears of corn that are green and other seven ears of corn that are dry. 
what 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 is what is this you know it was you know uh, something challenging and troubling the king of egypt and he asked that the two guys the one of the guys he was uh taken out from prison you know he remembered that yusuf alayhi salam is the one who may uh, interpret the dreams and he uh, told the the king and the king gave uh, sayyidina yusuf alayhi salam before he 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 was asked to make the tafsir of the ru'ya he said first you go and ask about the you know um the plot or the the the, the accusation first i want to clear up my accusation i was accused of fit and fahisha and put in prison for years you go and ask the women who seduced me and then subhanallah then because of sidq because of ikhlas because of taqwa allah saved sayyidina yusuf al-ana has has al-haq the truth came up the truth uh, revealed and appeared ana rawatuhu an nafsihi the woman said i i the woman said i i was the one who seduced him wa innahu lamin as-sadiqin remember this yusuf was truthful Yusuf was sadiq, Yusuf was mukhlis, Yusuf was muhsin, Yusuf was mu'min, Yusuf alayhi salam, whatever you can say of good characters, he was. Inshallah to another second episode, we're going to complete Surah Yusuf with, along with other surahs. Jazakumullahu khair, wa barakallahu feekum. Subhanakallahumma bihamdik, ishadu ala ilaha ilaha an, nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayka.